Yeah, so um, as a young, as a young disciple, a new Christian, I um, just made that commitment. I'm going to do whatever it takes to get to the meetings because I want to be there. And even if my flesh is yelling and screaming and having a tantrum on the way, kicking and screaming, um, I'm going to drag myself there because it's life to me. And I never regretted it. Every single time that I got myself there, I always came away the better for it. Happy, blessed, refreshed, edified, stronger than I was before. Um, I just felt full. And it was just, I needed that encouragement for the rest of the week to get through the week and to not just get through but to conquer um in Christ and be that overcomer so yeah um and it just really helped me with all the different things that I was going through in different seasons different weaknesses different addictions different struggles getting along to the meetings I got taught the word of God um yeah So just making that decision, making that commitment, and even if I got to the meeting exhausted, flustered, um, uh, yeah, whatever, Uh, even if I still felt irritated in my flesh or angry or whatever was going on just before the meeting, um, I was, I'm going to get there and I'm not going to let the devil stop me from receiving from God and it, it just shows like how much we really need to be at the meetings because he opposes us so much. Um, so yeah, there's a scripture. Let's turn there. Psalm 37 verse 23. So I, I realized um, that, yeah, Satan, a, a big way to hinder me from coming along to the meetings was discouragement. Um, like if I had made a mistake, if I tripped, stumbled, just stuffed up, um, he, I would then feel like shame and pride would want to hold me back from coming to the meetings or getting around my ministers, getting around my disciple, but particularly Bible studies because it's a bit more intimate. Um, I remember just uh, being tempted to withdraw maybe I would just get there by the skin of my teeth. Um, uh, but yeah, I would be there, but I, I wasn't really present. I wasn't really involved. I just want to just to stay on the fringes. That's how Satan would tempt me, what he'd tempt me with when I was feeling really discouraged. But I then realized, yeah, that's not the way of life. And um, actually, I want to push past the flesh. I want to push push past pride and um, and and humble myself and really receive from the Lord so that I can um, yeah just like just just grow and that meant that um, I had to make a decision that no matter what I'm gonna drag myself there <laughs> um, so yeah sometimes it meant I even was there late but in the beginning it was just getting there. And then little by little, I just, I grew more and more as I got more and more, as I participated more and more and I pushed past my flesh and said no to the lies of the devil and said yes to Jesus. If there was an invitation to pray, um, putting my hand up and that's really what I was encouraged to do in my discipleship, just pop, you know, shoot your hand up, shoot your hand up before you can think yourself out of what your heart really wants to do before you can think you, yourself out of living from your deepest desires, which is to um, uh, receive from the Lord and to, yeah, to be involved, to be that, like that little kid, a humble child, like the Lord tells us to be that just, that wants to learn um, and to come boldly before God, come boldly um, unto the throne of grace so that we can receive the mercy receive the mercy that we need, receive the grace that we need in time of need. Um, as the Bible says, so yeah, sometimes we can out, we can just overthink it so much. But instead of doing that, God encourages, like he, he's not out of perfection. He just wants hearts of faith, hearts that are trusting in him. And even if we do trip or stumble, um, may have stuffed up that we just get back up again and we don't stay down because Satan will then want us to kick you while you're down. 
he's the one that gave you the demonic thought, um, the temptation to sin. And then when you, um, if you receive it, then he's like, oh, shame on you. And he starts accusing you and pointing the finger at you, but it originated from him. Um, so yeah, it's really awesome to actually recognize that as a, as a Christian, as a disciple and to not fall for his lame games. And this scripture really encourages me. Um, Psalm 37, as I said, verse 23. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. Though he fall, he shall not be utterly cast down, for the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand. So the context is talking about a good man. That's you and I. We're the righteousness of God through Christ. Um, and here, though it's saying, though he falls, though she falls, though he or she falls, he or she shall not be utterly cast down, which means we're not going to be ruined. We're not going to stay down. Um, and then it says that he's holding us. So even though we've just tripped or we've just fallen, we've made a mistake, he's still holding you. He hasn't just dropped you because you've made a mistake. He's still for you. He's not against you. He's holding your hand. It says, for the Lord upholdeth him with his right hand. So he's still holding your hand. And just know that in that moment when discouragement comes, no, God is still holding my hand. Um, my heart's desire is to, um, is to to be to get back up again, and to, um, yeah, to not stay down, and that is enough. Like I don't desire it. I don't want to keep making the mistake. I, I don't want to make this mistake again. And that shows a born again heart that desire right there. And then obviously, you know, we repent, we can change our minds, we can acknowledge the mistake that we've made, get the accountability we need, the help we need in discipleship, share it, confess it, leave no provision for the flesh, you know, set ourselves up to win with that accountability and whatever uh, we need for that situation, for that weakness, for that um, area of sin, whatever it may be. And we can just get back up again and know that God is for us and we can come boldly. And when we come boldly before the Lord, that that word boldly means outspoken, where you're just, you can speak freely with God. Um, yeah, you're not reserved, holding back, awkward and weird because, oh, I've just made a mistake. God already knows um, and he is for you and he, he wants to help you. He is, he's right there holding your hand and he wants to lift you up. But it's up to us whether we stay down or we get back up again, whether we we choose to distance ourselves or whether we push past our flesh and lean in like our spirits are so doing. Our, our spirits are leaning forward. Our spirits are leaning in. And it's just humbling ourselves and choosing to get back up again and, yeah, despise the shame and whatever it is, embarrassment or whatever, push past that and don't avoid the very thing that's going to give you life, which is getting along to the meeting, which is sitting under the word and receiving the words of God and being around his people and being sharpened and being encouraged and having that really awesome fellowship. The next verse we're going to turn to is Proverbs chapter 24. Yeah, it's this way. Verse 16. For a just man falls seven times and rises up again but the wicked shall fall into mischief. So here we see a just man. Again, us. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Father. Um, and this just man falls seven times. So multiple times. Multiple times um, the just has fallen. <laughs> and we do. We, we will make multiple mistakes. But here, um, it's how we respond. So the just man falls seven times and rises up again. So we get back up again. It's the wicked who stay down. It's the wicked who fall into mischief. But as for us, we're not of those who draw back, as the Bible says. God has no pleasure in that when we withdraw ourselves. God loves faith. He takes pleasure, excuse me, in faith. Um, that's the only thing that pleases him. So he's not after perfection. He just wants hearts of faith that trust in him, that 
trust in what he has done for us. And yeah, so despite any mistakes, despite falling down, stumbling, um, <coughs> the, the thing to do here is to actually just get back up, get back up again and keep coming to the meeting, keep coming, keep drawing near. And like I said, despise the shame and just know that we want to be where God is. And knowing that the Father loves you, that he's for you, that he wants to help you, when you know that, you do want to be with him. Like children, they want to be with their dad. They can't wait for dad to come home from work. We want to be with him. And even if children have made a mistake, um, they they still want to draw near to their, to their dad, knowing that he loves them and that he's not going to just drop them the moment they've made a mistake. Or even if it's one that they've made a couple of times, they're not – you know, they're coming close and they're not wanting, they've got a heart of, um, you know, they're they're wanting to do right. Um, It's not out of wickedness, it's that weakness. And yeah, they, they are drawing near and God loves that. So uh, yeah, the scripture I was just thinking of though, was Matthew 18, where it says, where two or three are gathered, there I am in the midst of, of, you (laughs) something along those lines where God's saying like I'm with you when you gather together I'm with you and when we meet together at Bible studies God's there he's with us he's amongst us he's in the midst of us and like he is there and he's like okay you can have as much as me as you want um and it's just up to us we can have as much as the Lord as we want we can grow as much as we want we can um come to him and have full access to the Lord as much as we want. And that excites me. And even where we have failed, I have, and I know I, I will in the future as well, I will con- like make mistakes as I'm learning um, and just even be naughty at times. But just afterwards to really, um, yeah, to not stay down, like I keep saying, like though we fail <laughs> fail at pre- fail in the proving, fail in the tribulation, the trouble, the test. We can actually learn from that and be an encouragement to others through that by getting back up again. And we actually Satan runs the risk because it can actually really strengthen us. Because the good, the bad, whatever it is, um, God uses for our good. He can turn every situation, even our mistakes, even things that have been self inflicted. When we come with a humble heart and we repent, we acknowledge our, our sins, God can use the worst of situations, the most messed up situations. And really, like what um, I've heard ministers say, use the test and turn it into a testimony. Um, all the pain, all the messy situation, um, whatever it may be that we've gotten ourselves into or that we find ourselves in, um, God We'll use it for our good, the Bible says. So um, either way, we we can win when we, we go through it with the Lord and we just get back up again and we don't let Satan kick us while we're down and stay down in that place. So let's turn to Psalm chapter 1. I'll actually go to Psalm 27. <clears throat> Psalm 27, verse 4. One thing have I desired of the Lord. I'm actually going to read verse 3 for context. Though a host should encamp against me, this is David, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in the will, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. I love this so much because here we see David, he's in the midst of trouble. Um, so, yeah, he he's in war. He's Literally his life is being threatened. That's the context that he's talking about. And then straight after that he says, but one thing I have desired. One thing I desire, one thing I seek after, one thing I'm striving after, um, one thing I'm going to make sure of (laughs) that I'm committed to is to dwell in the house of the Lord. And 
he's, he's saying that I may dwell in the house of the Lord. Like it's such a privilege, it's such a joy, it's such a, um, yeah, a blessed position to be in. And the Bible says that blessed are those who don't walk in the counsel of the ungodly. And so that means that blessed are those who walk in the counsel of the godly. Um, that means that we're to be envied. That means that we're happy when we're walking in the counsel of the of the godly. And that's what we get when we come to our meetings. And it, it says that now, in let's turn to um, Psalms chapter 1. It's a bit of flicking around. Psalms 1, verse 1. Blessed is the man that walks not in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stands in the way of sinners, nor sitteth in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord. And in the law does he meditate day and night. <clears throat> so just making a point to just get under the word. Um, get to as many meetings as we can. That's where we are going to flourish. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that bringeth forth his fruit in his in his season. This, his leaf, sorry, <laughs> Also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. So that's that's what happens when we are um, receiving God's word. We're sitting under God's word, His counsel, the truth of God's word, and we we get planted. We're not just surface. We're planted. The roots are in. I'm not like meh about getting under the word of God. I don't I don't have that complacent attitude that Satan would try and get Christians to get to that complacent attitude where you just feel indifferent. You're not enthusiastic. You're just like, meh, if I get there, I get there. But if something else more important comes up, um, yeah, I'll just give it a miss and things like that, or I won't be able to make it. But um, more often than not, just like it is just so needful and helpful, just necessary that we, we get up under the word. Um, it helps our relationship with the Lord so much and it is literally life to us. Every time we do get around the word, we get under it and we learn from, from the Lord and we get to discuss it and learn from each other and learn to flow in the gifts. It's um, really just such a blessing. And so we are to be planted, planted in the word of God, planted in his house so our roots are down deep. We're not just, we're not here and there and easily moved here and there. Might be there, might not be there. Um, no, I'm there. I'm I'm where the Lord is. I want to be there. That's the desire of my heart because that's where I'm going to get the full counsel of God and our ministers don't hold back anything that's profitable for us. They, they do not hold back. They share words in season, timely words, the exact... Um, that, yeah, they seek God for us and <clears throat> they give us what we need to hear. So um, let's now turn to Psalm 23, verse 6, and it reads, Surely goodness and mercy, again, this is David, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. He's set his heart. He's made his mind up. He's committed. He's devoted. Um, here, he's he's dedicated, David, and he he has a heart. Um, what was that? Uh, well, he had a really soft heart towards the Lord, and he knew God as as his father, as his shepherd. And this is what Psalm twenty three is all about. Um, the Lord is my shepherd. So David knows that the Lord is his shepherd, his provider. God cares for him. God provides for him, protects him, loves him. And he knows, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <clears throat> David didn't want anything to distance him from the Lord. He wasn't on the fringes, and um, he was just so close to the to the Lord. He spoke very freely with the Lord. We see that through Psalms. He just, he spoke so much to the Lord, like in the midst of his trouble, in the midst of tribulation. And we know that we will have trouble in this world. The Bible says we will have tribulation. Um, good times, hard times, 
David stayed close to the Lord and he, he made some serious blunders, but he continually um, engaged with God, communed with God, spent time with the Lord. And he said that God's words are sweeter than honey to him. And honey was like the bee's knees, like honey was the, the dessert. Um, and it, God's word like superseded everything. Um, that's literally how he received God's words. And he, as a result, he just wanted to be in the house of the Lord. He wanted to um, hear the word of the Lord. Okay, let's go to Psalm 92. 